my husband's a little bit older than me. So let's say we get a reverse mortgage and he dies. And I obviously am going to get a new, handsomer, much better looking <laughs> husband, maybe a little bit younger. Brandon, I'm sorry, but I it's going to happen, more money. right? A lot more money. But let's say for some reason, I then pass away. What happens to my new young husband? <laughs> I love this scenario. <laughs> So we talked a little bit about um, how you can receive your reverse mortgage money mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> in, you know, payments to you every month or in a line of credit. What are, mm-hmm. what are all the options there? So all of the options. So we'll just start at the top. Okay. Single payment. I think okay. that one's pretty self-explanatory. Sure. You at closing. One lump sum. Right. Okay. You get the one lump sum once we fund and record. Okay. So then you have a term payment and a 10-year payment. The term payment is going to be a set amount of money for a set amount of time okay. that you're going to receive. So 500 bucks a month for the next 10 years, okay. we'll say, where a 10-year payment is going to be a set amount of time for the rest of your life. Okay. Yeah. So even if we exceed the value of the home on the loan, you're still going to get that money. Oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. How does that work? We just keep going. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. So That's if I live it's... to be 180. Mm-hmm. Please don't let me live to be right. I don't think anyone was, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I would still get those payments. Mm-hmm. So then my heirs don't have to pay that back. Nope, unless they decide to purchase the home. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. But I think at that point, like as an heir, it's reassuring that they're getting taken care of still. Yeah. That they have the money because I mean, at that point, a retirement would run out. Like, yes. You know. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So a ten-year payment is going to be for. The rest of your life, that set amount of money. Okay. So it's an it's a great option, and then you have your investment line where you get um, that line of credit that you can use as needed. Okay. So if longevity is in my family, mm-hmm. and which it is, mm-hmm. and you know, I mean, thankfully my parents are 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 well off, right? They were back in the day when yeah. pensions existed and all the things. But um, let's say that. Our parents didn't have that, mm-hmm. and they didn't save for retirement. Mm-hmm. This could be a way to help them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For the rest of their life. I yep. love that. It's something that, I mean, they work so hard to pay down their mortgage or pay it off, and then we get into a spot where it's like, oh, now I don't have enough income. This is where we can then use that as income. Okay. I love that. Very, very cool. So tell me, how how is a reverse mortgage different? Because- I, in my mind, I'm like, well, just go get a a home equity loan or Mm -hmm. a home equity line of credit. Mm -hmm. How is, how is this functioning different than, than those types of loans? Right. I actually just had this question from a member. I don't understand. Why would you do that? It's way more than if you were to just go and do a home equity. Yeah. You're right. It is more, but a home equity, you have to make that payment every single month with a reverse mortgage. You never have to make that payment. Oh, So you dip into the money. Great. You don't have to make a payment. HELOC, you dip into that money. Again, great, but you have to make a payment every single month. Okay. Okay. So it takes the the worry, the worry yeah. out of making that additional payment a month. Yep. I love that. So you mentioned earlier, I just want to clarify, as far as taxes go, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because we all love taxes. Um, I don't have to pay taxes on the money that I receive from my reverse mortgage. Nope. That's insane. I know. It's just, I don't want to say free money. Because <laughs> it's not free. You definitely paid free. for it and earned <laughs> right. it, right? But it's not something that you have to worry about claiming on your taxes, worrying about paying as additional income, anything like that. Nope. It's just coming directly to you and you don't have that additional stress. Okay. Love it. Let's say I turn 62, mm-hmm. I get a reverse mortgage. Mm-hmm. I have it for a few years and I pass away unexpectedly, right? Mm -hmm. My spouse wasn't expecting it. My kids weren't expecting it. Maybe my spouse dies too. We'll just say we're in a bad car accident, right? This is a hypothetical scenario. I pray I don't die in a car accident with my spouse after I'm 62. But um, what are my kids' options at that point? So we don't want to put the pressure on them to figure out what we're going to do with the house. Grieving is hard and it takes, you know, a long time. We don't want to throw it at them. So after 
your parents pass and you're the heirs or whatever that situation is. We will reach out to you and just educate you on what your options are. Okay. So we will give you up to 12 months to decide what you want to do with the home. Okay. If in 12 months you still haven't kind of come to an agreement with siblings or you haven't decided what you're going to do, we will allow an additional time so okay. that then you can figure out, okay, this is, you know, this is what I'm going to do X, Y, Z. So we'll allow you that 12 months. We're also there to help answer any questions, to help lead you through the the process of figuring out what you want to do. Okay. So it's not like a shotgun thing where, okay, my parents have passed. I have to figure this out. No. Okay. We give you additional time to really figure out what you you want to do without the pressure. You know, you've got a solid amount of time to figure that out. Okay. Okay. And um, let's say another random, random scenario because this likely actually could really happen. My husband's a little bit older than me. Okay. Right? So let's say we get a reverse mortgage and he dies. Okay. And I obviously am going to get a new, handsomer, much better looking husband, <laughs> maybe a little bit younger. Brandon, I'm sorry, but I it's going to happen, more money. right? A lot more money. <laughs> but let's say for some reason, I then pass away. Okay. What happens to my new young husband? <laughs> I love this scenario. <laughs> Um, so he would then have, because he's your spouse, right? Yes, he would be. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He's banking yeah. in on that. Okay. He's your spouse. So then he would have the option to continue living there, but he wouldn't have access to that equity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. The spouse still has a roof over his head. He just doesn't get a dip into that equity. All right. <laughs> Sorry, future, you know, old, young spouse. Um. Can you end up owing more than the home is worth in the end? Yes. That's where that 10-year payment comes into play. Okay. Where for the life, as long as you're alive, you can get that money. Okay. So as an heir, you would just say, hey, we don't want anything mm -hmm. to do with that because they mm -hmm. lived until they were 180 and mm -hmm. I don't want to touch that. Right. Okay. Which I think is a relief because then it's not like, okay, well, I can sell the house for this much, but now I have like an additional 100000 I got to pay off. Okay. No, at that point, just walk away. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. So one other thing that I've heard, <laughs> reverse purchase. What does that mean? Oh, yes. It's the best option in my opinion. Okay. Like I, it's so, like, it's so exciting. <laughs> okay. So a reverse purchase is a great option where you can purchase a home with a reverse mortgage. Okay. None of this makes sense to I me. I know, right? So it's a little yeah. shocking. People yeah, yeah, look yeah. at me like, what are you saying? And it is. It's a little, it's like, how does that happen? So obviously, say you moved out of one residence and you okay. have 300000 in equity that you got out of that. Okay. You want to go purchase this other house for $500,000. you are going to put that full 300000 down. Yeah. And you would only have, what, a $200,000 loan. Yeah. You can purchase that new home with a reverse mortgage and you would have more than sufficient equity because you're putting that 300000 down. So you can buy a new home and never have a payment on it with a reverse mortgage. Right? How exciting is that? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. How interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's still something we like purchasing it. You have to have enough equity, yeah. but it's something that we can definitely do as long as you have the equity to put it down then you can go in and purchase that home and never have a payment. Which is that pretty common? Because I mean, I'm thinking of like, again, my parents, for example, mm -hmm. you know, they had a grundle of kids. Now they're in this large house mm -hmm. that they're not even going downstairs very right. often. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the basement's not touched. Right. Let's just sell the thing and get them into something smaller. Mm -hmm. But then they wouldn't have a payment. Right. If they had the equity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That's I, cool. So I don't think enough people know about it, that yeah. it's an option, but it is a great option. And so it's definitely something that, yeah, if just like your parents, you're in a much bigger home that you're just not using that space yeah. and you don't need it anymore. Let's downsize, put that equity to work and get rid of a payment. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. So what are, I mean... The down payment would be the equity from my previous home that mm -hmm. I'm selling. So that's taken care of. Mm -hmm. 
still same fees, mm-hmm. all of that. Like, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, any disadvantages to doing that? I honestly can't think of any. Okay. All I right. had a my mom had a friend who um her husband passed. Yeah. And the house was just too big and she yeah. was on limited income and she was like, I don't what am I gonna do? So I talked to her, I was like, this is an option. And she was like, I can do that. So I, again, it's just something that we don't know is available. Yeah. So she did it. That's what exactly, she took the equity out of this house, put it down on this house, and no longer a payment. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love this. This is like giving me hope. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is awesome. Okay, so let's say, Heather, I am. I, you've sold me on this reverse mortgage. I just need to be 62 and have some equity. But- <laughs> What does it take for me to now start the process? Okay, so to get the ball rolling, we want you to come and talk to us. Okay. So come in and talk to us as the lender. Okay. Talk to us. We're going to really get into the nitty gritty of your situation to make sure you're of age, you have enough equity, um, what your income status is at, all of that good stuff. Once we've broken it down, we're then going to know what the right product is for you. Okay. Right. So we'll actually put together a sheet that has the top three products for you. And then we'll actually give that to you. And you have to go to a class, a reverse mortgage class. So it's a counseling class. Okay. That you go and get educated because this is a big decision, right? Yes. So we want to make sure that you're educated and you know what you're getting into and you know all your options. So then, so we'll give you a packet and you take that packet to a counseling class and you'll meet with a counselor and they'll go over, basically they're going to reiterate the same thing we went over, but then also educate you on a couple other things. Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to receive a certificate that you have to bring back to us. And then once we get that certificate, we can actually start the ball rolling as far as the application, getting that appraisal in. So... We want you to come to us first so we can give you a little packet to take to the counselor. Okay. Um, it is some money. That counseling class is some money. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Who is providing this? <laughs> <laughs> so it does cost, well, it depends. Typically between 125 to 250 depending. Okay. We will provide you a list of counseling agencies that provide reverse mortgage counseling okay. that are close to you. Um, and then you can go in, make that appointment, pay that, and then get your certificate. So then we can get the ball rolling. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have to have a certificate in order uh-huh. to start. Okay. We cannot move forward without that certificate. Okay. Interesting. Well, and so my next question is, I mean, I come from a large family, right? I feel like I'm really good. I could persuade my parents to get that reverse mortgage. No problem. Yeah. But I got... I got seven other siblings I have to worry about, right? And convincing a few of them, I think, would be a little bit harder. Right. Right. So how how do we explain this in, like, layman's terms? No offense to my seven other siblings. I, I feel like you guys would grasp it. But, how, like, how do we really explain this in a simplified way to get everyone on board? What are your thoughts? So I think the best option is to have us come to you. Okay. So it's not a situation. I mean, a reverse mortgage is just hard to kind of wrap your head around anyways, just because it's going kind of against the norms of what we're used to on a forward mortgage. Yeah. So we can actually set up a time, come out and meet with anyone that you want to invite at your house, wherever, you know, wherever is comfortable. Okay. And we can help educate and answer any questions that they may have. I think that's probably the best route to go um, just because partly maybe if it's coming from me and not you, they're going to listen more. Yes. (laughs) That's how my siblings are. I'm the youngest (laughs) and I should know everything, you guys. Right. That's how my siblings are. So that's why, like, I think maybe in that kind of a situation, um, they could actually hear it um, and answer any questions that maybe you wouldn't know. But I do know. Um, but that's, I mean, same thing. We're, we can come to your parents to do the application, to sign things. They don't have to come to us. I know some people don't leave the house. It's yes. hard for them to leave the house. So we make it easy where we can come come okay. to them as often as needed. Okay. So a- another thought that I've had as we've been talking is 
there's obviously no escrow Mm -hmm. because there's no taxes. Right. We've, I mean, I obviously am still going to pay all of my utilities and all of those things. Another thing on my mind is insurance. Right. What does that look like? So you're right. There's no escrow on this, right? Because you're not making a monthly payment. So where's that escrow going? Well, it doesn't exist. (laughs) So two ways. If you have a hard time making your homeowner's insurance or your property taxes, because property taxes can get up there in price, right? It's a lot of money. Yeah. So if you have a hard time paying those two things, we can do what's called a LISA, where basically it's a separate account that we can put money into and hold there to pay your property taxes and homeowner's insurance every single year so that you don't have to stress about it. A LISA? Called a LISA. Why is it called a LISA? Why not a a Heather or a (laughs) Crystalina? Hey, I'm down for a Heather (laughs) all day long. (laughs) Yeah, it's called a Lisa, and it's just basically a set aside of a chunk of money specifically used to pay escrows, or not escrows, homeowners insurance and property taxes. Okay. But if you don't have that problem, then you'll just continue to pay them on your own every single year. If my payment every month helps cover that, then I'm okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. So it's just because property taxes and insurance, if you don't pay those, that's the one thing that we can foreclose upon. Okay. So you do, that's another thing is, you know, we want to make sure that the home is insured. You've got a lot of equity in that. We don't want you to lose it if a fire or, you know, something right. like that happens. So we want to make sure that you have that protection as well. And then property taxes, we all know how those roll, right? Yes, they yeah. can put a lien on the home, all of that. So we want to make sure that those are paid. So if you have a hard time, we can do that set aside. Or if we're good, then let's move on. Okay, awesome. What does the Lisa account actually stand for? What does this mean? Lisa is life expectancy set aside. Okay. Yes. So L-E-S-A. So for my life expectancy, Mm -hmm. all those payments are going to be made for me. So then, I mean, I'm sure this is a question that we'll get to when it happens, but let's say I live over my life expectancy Mm -hmm. because remember, I'm living to be 180. Do I just have to reopen a Lisa at that time? Nope. Just continues to get paid. So at that point... You would it would just come out of right if you go over okay. that balance out over that equity mm-hmm. okay over what your home is valued at same kind of a situation it's just going to continue to be paid for you okay why wouldn't I want to set up a lease of them I mean I don't know I can't think of any reasons why you wouldn't want to I mean it's a it, for me it's a peace of mind <laughs> just Absolutely. like escrow account right yes yes yeah. yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So on this Lisa account, although I think it should be the Crystalina account, um, do I have to actually make those payments? Are you doing it for me? Does the account just automatically happen? How does this work? We take care of all of it for you. Oh. So it's it's just like an escrow account, essentially, but instead okay. of monthly payments set aside, we pay it. We take it out every single year and pay it for you. You don't have to even think twice about it. You just have the security of knowing it's there and it's going to be taken care of. So even if I could do it on my own, Mm -hmm. could I still set up the Lisa and just have it taken care of? Yep. I love that. Mm -hmm. I need a Lisa for all the things in my life. (laughs) Right. Can't we just get a Lisa for (laughs) all bills? (laughs) Yeah. That sounds awesome. I love it. I love Lisa. So as far as getting a reverse mortgage, we know you're looking at my equity. You're looking at my age. Obviously, those are the two big factors. Does it matter what my credit score is, my credit history? Like, does any of, or if I've got equity, you're giving me the loan. So, yes, credit history does play okay. into it. If you've had a late mortgage payment in the last 12 months, that's going to disqualify you. Okay. So, in that case, the FICO score isn't as important as it is on a, a forward mortgage, but the history, your history, is important. So we are we are analyzing that, um, but not necessarily the FICO score as heavy as you would on a on a forward mortgage. But yes. Okay. Okay. And then in addition to that, let's say I don't really need a reverse mortgage. Like I planned for retirement. I'm good to go plus some, you know, like 
we've got the trust funds for the kids set up, all the things. Should I still get one just in case? Why not? Okay. Right? Yeah. (laughs) So it's something um, that even now here at Mountain America, we may recommend that a reverse mortgage is a great product. So it, it could be an emergency fund that is a large emergency fund. I mean, it's not what's it going to hurt at the end of the day. You're If you're not dipping into it, you're not going to have to pay money on it. Okay. So that would be the case where if you don't need it, I wouldn't get a payment plan, like a 10-year or a term payment. I would get that line of credit and just let it sit and grow. And then if I need it, it's there and I've got enough to tap into. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. I love that. And then obviously... Our economy is doing this, right? Right. Pandemics, all the things. Does that and the uncertainty there affect this product at all? Or what does that look like? So it affects. So if you're going to do it right now, it's going to affect whatever that value comes in. But down the road, it's not necessarily going to affect it, right? It's kind of like on a forward mortgage, like, oh, goodness, my rate is 2% or 6%. Yeah. Uh, you know, or I'm over, I owe more than what my home is valued at the current moment. Well, that's for now, maybe not in five, 10 years. Right. So that's why if you're going to be in there for long term, no, it's really not. It's just a blip in time. Okay. So um, I guess... Now, if you're doing the application, it has a little bit of that effect, but long term, not really. Okay. With the line of credit, it is an adjustable rate mortgage, so an arm. Okay. So it does fluctuate. With prime and all the things. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you're not making that payment. (laughs) So what? I mean, it's not money out of your pocket. Right. It's just you're not making that payment. Okay. And if you don't owe anything, even better. Right, right. So there is an interest rate associated with my reverse mortgage, Mm -hmm. but that, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just asking questions. There's an interest rate associated with it, but I'm not having to pay it because all my equity from my home is paying it. But if my kids want to purchase it back, that could affect it Mm -hmm. because that's the amount that I've withdrawn. Right. Okay. So on, so if you're doing like a term or a 10 year payment, those interest rates are fixed rates. So they stay the same for the life of the loan. If you do a line of credit, like I said, it's an arm and it's an adjustable rate. Okay. But it's accruing over that life of the loan. So you don't have to worry about it. But like you said, as heirs, if they're wanting to purchase it, whatever interest is accrued, it's just going on that loan balance. Okay. And that'll just have to be paid off If they want to purchase the property. If they want to purchase it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking to leave my home to my heirs, is a reverse mortgage a good idea? Depends on how much equity you have in the house. Okay. I get that question quite a bit from people who know that I talk about reverse mortgages. Yeah. I just had this conversation about a week ago on the soccer field. (laughs) Um, She was like, I don't understand. Like, I want to leave my home to my kids. And I go, well, that's an option. She goes, but why would I do a reverse mortgage then? Well, you could do a reverse mortgage just like the line of credit, and it's there if you need it. Yeah. Um, if it's something that you want to make sure you're giving them a set amount each, then maybe a reverse mortgage isn't your best bet. But if it's something that you're like, okay, you know, I have paid it off. I'm just going to have that. Just in case I need it, it's a great emergency fund as well. Okay. So it, I guess it really just depends how you want a certain amount, how much equity you already have in the home, um, the situation. But I, I mean, I don't feel like you can go wrong with a, a reverse mortgage. It's a great product and is so helpful in so many different ways. Yeah. And then correct me if I'm wrong. Let's say I do get that line of credit, right, with my reverse mortgage. And heaven forbid, right? I have some major health issue. Mm -hmm. I can use those funds for whatever I need. Whatever you need. There is no restriction. People use it to do home renovations, vacations, medical bills, uh, so many different things. So no, there is no restriction on what you can and cannot use those for. Okay. Awesome. Um, If our viewers and listeners are interested in learning more about reverse mortgages, Heather, what do they do next? So- 
reach out to us. Okay. So we have mortgage loan officers in all of our branches. Okay. They may not be there on the day that you go in because some of them cover multiple branches. But we have a reverse mortgage in every single branch. Make okay. an appointment with them and then bring in your whole situation. If you have documentation, that's helpful too. But bring it to us so that we can evaluate and let you know if this is the best product. You can call us as well. Okay. Give us a call over the phone. We have loan officers who can talk to you over the phone as well. Or if you're more comfortable with someone coming to meet you in person, that's an option as well. Awesome. Okay. Well, I am, I'm going to get a reverse mortgage when I'm 62. <laughs> I, love I don't it. know about the rest of you, but you've totally, you've totally lined out all the benefits for me. So thank you so much for your time, Heather. Thank you. Yes. And thanks to all of you for viewing as well. And we will see you on the next episode of Guiding You Forward. <laughs>